Right. Thank you very much for coming to my talk. Um, I'm a developer here uh, in Australia for Nargis Enterprises. I do their documentation and maintain uh, testing and development and that sort of stuff. This talk was uh, going to be a full talk, but I've cut it down to a 10 or 15 minute talk. So I'm covering some of the core principles behind monitoring to, and hopefully you can take something away from this today. So I'd like to start with what normally happens in the beginning is that uh, someone will set up monitoring after there's been an unavoidable event like a disk server running out of disk space. So it's pretty easy to get a monitoring solution up and running. You install some agents, you play around with it, and you get the basic four things running, your up down state, your disk, your memory, and your CPU. But you will find that that solution is a bit rushed to get it implemented, and there isn't a lot of planning involved to actually make it happen. But it's working and you know, people are happy, they're seeing things, they're knowing about it. But pretty soon you'll begin to know about different types of monitoring and you might not have read about them or learnt about them. So this is where active and passive comes into play. Your active monitoring is when your monitoring system is responsible for going out and getting information from those things. It does it on a schedule, it knows when it's got to do it and if something doesn't work it will know about it straight away. Passive monitoring is when things send stuff to the monitoring system. It's those things' responsibility to send the stuff in. Now that might be a scheduled event, or it could be an event that's happened because it was triggered. Uh, I really like the scenario of a UPS that loses power. Um, you know, if you're doing a uh, active monitoring of that UPS, it might have just checked that it, the UPS is okay, everything was great. Ten seconds later, you're on uh, battery power and it might be four minutes and 50 seconds later before you actually know that you're on battery power. If the same type of monitoring using passive scenario, the UPS will send an SNMP trap immediately to your monitoring solution and then you'll know about it straight away. And you don't have to choose one or the other. Your monitoring solution of choice will allow you to uh, configure it to do both, a combination of both if you want to. So going back to that original solution where someone set up monitoring to get it running and they got it all running and everyone was happy, then they start to look at other things they can do with their monitoring solution. They might go, hey, let's look at doing some log monitoring. We've used this agent. This agent's got this log module. Let's have a bit of a play. We play around with it. Great, it's working. And in this scenario, they were using the active method. So the monitoring system was going out, polling the agent, the agent was then querying, say, the logs on that server. It might then do a CPU or a um, IO load on that server. If you're doing that every five minutes, that might not be the best solution. So the, one of the points I'm making here is, while you might have implement, implemented a monitoring solution and you've got your chosen thing you're doing, when you go to do new things, Stop and reevaluate what you're doing. You know, are there better methods available? So, with active and passive, there's a couple of different examples there of what you can and can't do, or you can do them either way, it's up to you. But what I recommend the different ways, and I'll go through some of these here. And a lot of questions often arise with, you know, why do I need an agent? Why can't I do it agentless? Like, SNMP or WMI, it works great, why can't we do that? You can, it's up to you. But whatever method you choose, you're going to have to touch the device somehow to configure it, whether that's through some management system or a party, um, uh, sorry, I've had a mind blank there. Um, but you will have to actually do that, that, that configuration yourself. So the, the most important thing is, when you make that decision, you have to plan for the future in regards to if you need to make a configuration change later, how will you be able to do that? Uh, you'll need some sort of change management solution. And the same with installing agents. You know, if you need to upgrade to a newer agent later, how will you do it? And like I said before, an agent can be active or it can be passive. The configuration of that agent will dictate how they will work. 
So there's a couple of different monitoring solutions. Some of them have already been covered today. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each one. It's more of a, uh, an understanding of why these solutions exist and what um, problems or solutions they provide. So Nargis Core and the Nargis Plugins project. Nargis Core is just a big task scheduler. All it does is it has a list of things it needs to go and check and it does it on a schedule. Uh, it can receive active checks and it can, uh, sorry, it can perform active checks and it can receive passive check results. But it can also hook into other monitoring solutions to do other things, whether it's to receive information from other monitoring systems or to go and gather more data from them. It does all the normal things like uh, you've got flap detection, uh, your child-parent relationship, you're alerting, uh, you name it, you can do it. And if it can't, you can write something to do it for it. And Nagios Plugins is a companion project. It is actually, they are the things that go and do the monitoring. And they might be a, an SNMB query to a device or a WMI agent call or just checking things on the local disk. Um, and they can actually be installed on your remote agents as well and be run over there. And anyone can write a plugin for Nagios Core. It's a very simple script. If you can talk to that thing through a network cable and get the information, then you can write a plugin for it. You had, uh, I think it was Josh earlier was talking about the Elasticstack. I'm not going to go into too much about it because it's great. I, I love what it does. It's, when I was going back to that solution earlier where someone wanted to do log monitoring, this is what you would set up for log monitoring. It's a passive solution. It receives the logs. You set up all your devices to send logs to the, uh, your Elasticstack. It will index them. Uh, one of the great things I love about the stack is that it's a fault tolerant solution. You can scale it out to as many nodes as you want. As much disk space as you've got, it'll take it. It's up to you to decide. Um, and it's got great um, visualizations to actually analyze the data that you receive later. Uh, the other thing I do like is that it stores the data separately from the source. So if you have some rogue admin decides to make a bunch of changes to the network and then clear the logs on that server, well, it's irrelevant because it's already pushed that log information over to the Elastic Stack. And from there, you can uh, do the forensics investigation and find out what happened and deal with it later. MRTG is a great tool for getting uh, bandwidth statistics from your network devices. Uh, it queries the in and out metrics of SNMP enabled devices and it compares the last uh, value it received against the current value and works out the difference. Uh, then you can, it's not just switches or routers or firewalls that are capable, operating systems are capable, anything that's SNMP uh, enabled and has these generic uh, OIDs available, they can be queried and, and generate these graphs. And you can also uh, get other OIDs like temperature and humidity uh, and configure MRTG to query them. It, it's, it runs on a five minute interval normally and it does it as a bulk uh, job. And you can then use other monitoring systems like Nargios to query the data it pulls off and then do bandwidth checks and then you can do alerting based on if thresholds are passed and those sorts of things. Uh, this is a good example where you use, you, Nargis can hook into different monitoring solutions and, and pull information out and you can separate the actual gathering of data from the, from the alerting and the monitoring of data. You don't have to try and do everything with one solution. One thing MRTG can't do is tell you what's actually happening when something goes wrong or when there's a big spike in network traffic. Uh, Cisco introduced NetFlow to their OS a while ago uh, and that gives you detailed input, output traffic and what ports it was going on. Uh, this is another passive solution. You set up the uh, NFCAT listener to, to listen for the data coming from the switches and you it will then uh, store that in a, system, a disk subsystem later where you can then query it later. And it's very similar to MRTG where 
It could be switches or routers or firewalls. There's a lot of different flows. There's S-flow and J-flow. There's also some operating system agents that will be, can, can be configured to send flow data through to uh, your NFCAP listener. Um, and once again, you, you can hook Nagios in to query that data and do uh, alerting and reports. It's up to you. Uh, yeah, I, it's a great solution for doing more forensic investigation as in what happened later on. Now, I don't mean centralise your solution, try and install everything on one monitoring box. Um, this is about don't try and reinvent the wheel if you don't need to. A good example is Nagios Core can do your notifications and it has escalation logic built in. It can send notifications to uh, an email or it could be a, a cell phone or it could be a ticketing system. Now, you could also configure Elastic to do that same type of thing, but then you may not want to duplicate that actual functionality. You could easily configure Nagios Core to have some passive services and get Elastic to send alerts to those passive services where then you can use the notif notification logic in the Nagios Core and not have to you know, double up on when things go wrong, making sure that both parties are involved and that sort of stuff. This is a really big thing I'm passionate about. What is monitoring your monitoring? How will you know when your monitoring solution is down? It's down, it's not going to tell you. So run up another monitoring solution and get it to monitor your production instance, but make sure your production instance is monitoring the solution that's being monitored. And then if either instance goes down, then you'll get notified about it straight away. Other things to try and uh, work towards is having, uh, keeping things simple. Um, templates are a great way to define things centrally. And uh, if you make one, if you need to tweak one value, you tweak that value and then it will be reflected in all your objects globally. And groups are a very similar thing, like uh, a contacts group. You might have all your admins in an admin contact group. You then change uh, memberships of that contact group and that'll be reflected wherever that contact group is. We often see people go and define individual contacts all over the place. Someone leaves the organisation, another one starts, and it's a bit of a nightmare to try and fix that configuration. Document what you're doing. You know, it's 10 screenshots is better than nothing. I really love documentation myself. I go to a bit more detail than a lot of other people do, but on the other hand, I like to make sure I know what I've set up so later on down the track when something goes wrong, I know how to fix it. Going back to your agents, we recommend that you use agents that have TLS for data encryption and also uh, configure those agents, lock them down more to who's allowed to actually talk to those agents. Um, and it's worthwhile taking into consideration your ad additional addresses for DR devices, that your DR monitoring server that may be brought up in another subnet later. You're going to need to, your agents are going to need to know about that. Otherwise, when you bring it up, you're going to have to go and touch everything. A lot more frustration. Need I say more? Backups are just one of those things and they're often forgotten and you can forget what, why all that hard work you put into setting everything up is, is gone. And finally, how does disaster uh, recovery fit in, or how does your monitoring si system fit into your disaster recovery plan? When there is a disaster, do you care about your monitoring system? Do you just want to get in and fix things? You know, or do you, do you need to make that as part of one of your first steps when you bring everything up in your DR site? That's it. Thank you very much. I think I'm out of time. <laughs>